Hello, my name is Shelly Sanchez Terrell, and I want to share with you a shortened version of my Plymouth eLearning Conference keynote. I would like to thank Steve Wheeler for asking me to be a part of his fantastic conference. When I first began writing the 30 Goals Challenge for Educators book, it began as a blog post two years ago, and now over 6,000 educators have joined the challenge. I decided for 30 days each day I would accomplish a goal and I would have my personal learning network of educators support me. Many times I found that they transformed the way that I thought of education. One of these participants was Marty Sides and in one of my goals to cause a ripple, Marty Sides challenged me to think of it more as the flapping wings of a butterfly. So today, as silly as it sounds, I would like to encourage you to flap your wings like a butterfly. This is actually based on the theory, the butterfly effect, which is based on the chaos theory, the work of Edward Lorenz, who basically stated that a butterfly in Brazil, just by flapping its wings, has the profound effect of changing the course of a tornado in Texas or causing a tornado. I feel the same way about educators. Many schools around the world teach children 180 to 200 days a year and every single day that we step in the classroom we make an impact we have the ability to make a negative impact and we have the ability to make a positive impact either way we change lives and i believe that educators should begin walking into the classroom and teaching as if they're changing lives because whether we like it or not we are. Simon Fitch said in a blog post that really touched me, a great teacher said to me, the purpose of education is change. So I would change the world. How many of you came into this profession believing that you could change the world? I believe the majority of educators believe this way. We don't get paid enough. We're definitely stressed. And we often are the scapegoats uh, when things go wrong. So I truly believe that educators have this kind of big heart and passion and believe they can change and make a profound difference or they wouldn't get in this profession. But somewhere along the way, the media, parents, administrators, the different types of things we have to deal with, the time we have to give, we just get burnt out and we begin to lose sight and we begin to lose our passion. So I wanna encourage you today to believe again and not only do I want you to believe, but I want you to think of a mission statement, of a vision of how you believe education changes the world. And then I want you to be able to communicate this to your local community, educators, parents, administrators, and especially your students. Many of us believe that we're only one person, we're only a teacher, and we can do only so little. But I believe that we can change the world. And I believe every single day that I wake up, that's my mission, to be a world changer. And I believe I really can do this. And this was translated to me from the first world changer I ever met, which was my father. I come from uh, Mexican-American heritage. Many, many generations, my family comes from poverty. They come from um, high crime rates. They come from drug abuse teenage pregnancy, and welfare systems. And my dad decided that his five girls would be different. He decided all of us would go to college and we would graduate from college. And so we were the first generation who graduated from college and many of us have our masters. My dad didn't graduate from college and he didn't have the money to send us, but he believed that this could happen. And because he believed and he worked towards this goal, it did happen. And now he's not only broken a generational cycle, but he has perpetuated a new cycle because my nieces and my nephew also are going to college. Who is this guy? This is Dan Robert, Roberts. And I met him on Twitter, but I met him face to face in this conference. So I decided to pick on him today. And Dan is like many, many, many teachers on social media networks today where he is using social media to really change the world, to make a profound impact, to collaborate with teachers worldwide. And that's why I decided to pick on Dan. There are educators out there who are collaborating, trying to make a difference, who believe 
in the power of change. Dr. Sumatra Sugata Mitra said, there are places on earth in every country where good schools cannot be built and good teachers cannot or do not want to go. He put ATM machine types of computers in India um, in places where teachers wouldn't be. But I believe that social media, and I have seen this, has the power to really reach those schools as well. For example, I worked with an educator in Nepal to be able to provide him different resources and curriculum. Right now, his school, he needs to build three schools, and I'm helping him try and raise the money to build these schools. I've met teachers from different developing countries that write me daily and say, thank you so much for sharing the resources that you do. I can use them in my classroom. We don't have this kind of training. We don't have this type of professional development opportunities. And so for them, it's really something that that is really important to them that makes a difference though something that you share on facebook linkedin on twitter five minutes later one of these teachers can use in their classroom john davitt who also was a keynote who does amazing things with technology all over the world um in this conference he said we haven't met many learners yet who deep down don't want to learn i want to expand this definition of learners and also include educators I think many of us think that burnt out educators no longer want to learn. I would like to challenge you to believe that they do want to learn. They just need to be inspired again. Stephen Heppel, another keynote at this conference said, the world of transparency empowers people. When we're transparent, when we become digital publishers and publish what we do in the classroom online, then we begin to empower other educators. We have the power through free social media tools to impact educators around the world, to collaborate, to begin our own grassroots movements, to take that vision that I asked you to think about at the beginning, those mission statements, and to really send these messages. Already, politicians, celebrities, um, media gurus, are using social media in powerful ways and they have an advantage over us because they were taught in their careers, they were groomed to be able to reach their audience, to be able to send an effective message so they know how to do it. I would like to share my background in communication theory and marketing, um, which was part of my bachelor's degree, and to kind of encourage you today to be able to look at your role as an educator on social media in a different way so that way you can Try to become viral. And yes, we do need viral educators uh, because they're already sending viral messages about education. But we have the power to do that too. And when we begin to become viral and spread our message around, then we have the power to really transform the education systems around the world. We can make an impact. I want to show you a few of these numbers. I want you to think about them and what they can mean. The first number, 550 million you may have used. These are the amount of users on Facebook. And remember, when we try to hit an audience, we're not necessarily hitting other educators. We're hitting parents. Remember, um, we are reaching those who all are part of education. And because everyone has been a part of education, has had an education or gone through the education system, many, many, many people believe that they have these ideas of what transformation should look like. So I want you to think of your an audience including more and more people. So these are the Facebook users. In LinkedIn, there's 997,000. It's something that um, I heard another educator say on Twitter. Um, YouTube views a day are 2 billion. The amount of views um, the average person sees on YouTube is 15 minutes a day. If you publish a video, you could be part of that 15 minutes a day. 22 countries and in 24 languages are the different ways that YouTube reaches people and audiences. Can you see the potential that you have? You can become a viral educator. Chris Lehman said it's no longer enough to do powerful work if no one sees it. But can educator messages go viral? Yes. One of the greatest examples of the shift happened videos. This was by two educators in Wisconsin, Carl Fish and Scott McLeod. Over 20 million 
views on YouTube. There are various versions and all of them have over a million or 100,000 viewers. So yes, our messages can go viral. And I believe that each one of us, especially on social networks, has this leaf within them and that we have to go forth and we have to share and we have to gather together and try to get these messages. And that way we can begin to drown out those other extra messages that are flooding of what education transformation should be. And the reason we should do this is because these messages include um, statistics and treating our students like numbers. And, and I really believe that the education system right now, it really needs us to go out there and to really show what does this look like. Our students aren't numbers, but how do we convey our messages effectively? What real education transformation looks like? How, what real authentic learning looks like with students doing things, collaborating, walking around, um, really doing cooperative learning and all of this. Well, a few things to think about. First of all, you need to think about your audience. And your audience, remember, includes students, parents, administrators, um, society. So think of your audience when you're publishing a message anywhere on a social network, whether it's a tweet, whether it's a video on YouTube. Ask many people before you publish it um, from different types of, that represent the different types of stakeholders, what they think about it. We live in a society that's really used to different types of images and powerful images and powerful stories and multimedia. So yes, we, we have to make it visually appealing. We have to appeal to the senses, share those videos that make a profound impact, um, share those audio clips, those that music that really just kind of meshes together and creates something really beautiful that really will help inspire our message. Um, this is something that I think a lot of educators don't think of. And sometimes we have the tendency when we present and stuff to just cloud our, our images with many, 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 many words. But the reality is that many people would just take about three to five major points from any type of presentation. So really, we just need to keep reiterating the those major points that we want. One of the most powerful things you can do is share stories, real stories how social media or how education is and, and how you show what it does inside your actual classroom. Show what this learning looks like. If you can and the parents give you permission, then share your students loving, enjoying the lessons, things like that. And you can also share your stories of, of the troubles and the struggles that you have because other educators will appreciate this and they'll be able to learn from it even if they don't use your exact lesson or whatever you're sharing inside their classroom the exact same way, it doesn't matter because they can apply it and they can adapt it. And, and this will really help them. And also, you know, when we begin to share and be very transparent, then we're able to show, um, establish a kind of communication. And then parents and other stakeholders begin to see we are really trying, we really love what we do. And this is a student story that I would like to share with you. Marty Sides interviewed her son Riley as part of the challenge to know your students and asked educators how they would teach her son Riley. Listen to his story. Hello, my name is Riley. What grade are you in? I am in fourth grade. What do you think makes a good teacher? Um, that they come around and look. If you have troubles, you should um tell the teacher, and they should actually help you. Is there anything else you want to say about yourself that you think we should know? That I do have dyslexia and ADHD. And what's the other thing we learned about you? That's heart. I have a heart murmur. How powerful was that? Another thing you should consider is your message. Some of us, we try to make shortcuts and we'll share the exact same message on Facebook and Twitter the same way. 
And we don't think that the audience in Facebook doesn't understand hashtags or we share several links and that doesn't really translate well on Facebook. So we really have to know the medium, observe it, lurk, see what really will make your message powerful before you share it. But if you don't listen to any of this, listen to this, please convey your passion. Passion has the ability to transform hearts. One of the educators at this conference went up and spoke, and that's all he did. He didn't even have a presentation, but everybody in the audience listened to him because he conveyed this passion for what he was doing so well. One of the greatest keynotes I ever saw was David Crystal, a famous linguist, and all he does is get up with the microphone. When you're passionate about something, it really translates. So I hope that I have convinced you as an educator on social networks, that the power we have through networking is humbling, frightening, and exciting. Use it well. This is a quote by Ruth Cohenson at T. Ruth during one of our Ed Chats. And if you need any more help, or if I can help you spread your message in any sort of way, you can contact me at Shell Terrell. I will support your projects. I'll let people in my social network know um, and these are some of the projects that I contribute to. The A Planet Project, you can help other educators around the world. And we are mentoring them to be on personal learning networks, use Twitter, Facebook, and all these networks for education. Reformsymposium.com, it's a free e-conference you can attend. And we have some great speakers. We currently have about 8,000 educators who attend worldwide. Consider presenting consider attending. Thank you for listening to my keynote today.